um, there would be a, there would be a, um, an increase in response time in the up to area, but by no means by two minutes. And, and, and as far as I understand it from the data that I see, it's somewhere in the region of 30 seconds to a minute. So, excuse me, sorry. Um, so, oh, sorry, can I, can I just please ask for quietness while we do have this discussion? Thank you. So, so that response time um, comfortably falls within the response times that the, the fire service has set for themselves. Okay. Sure. I failed my physics earlier. But if we're moving two minutes away from the community, then that is two minutes nearer to West Clearly. It we can't by definition not be any more than two minutes further away from the community. It just doesn't make sense. It isn't just an issue about distance, it's about it's about um, the the network, the road network, um, um, the traffic signals and, and other things. And so so clearly, you know, the the, the road network in the Upton director in the Upton direction um, is, well, as I said, the response times would be somewhere between 30, 30 seconds to a minute, by no means two minutes. Okay, well, Chair, if I can just continue that one. Okay. That's the information given by the fire authority. Is that a paper exercise, or is that an exercise where they've actually travelled those distances, particularly peak hour traffic, or when, for example, the lanes to Hoylake or West Kirby are closed because of farm traffic? Ethan, I'm not sure that Matthew can answer the questions on behalf of the fire brigade. We've obviously got some information in, both within your calls, but to, I think it's a bit unfair to be asking Matthew. Well, I don't mean to be unfair at Matthew, but I'm just trying to get to the back of the data that's been quoted to us in the report room. Really. So it, it, has, it has been modelled, and I'll add that. I mean, the, the response times in both directions have been modelled and very carefully modelled in a similar way that we would, you know, our, our traffic engineers would assess any application for uh, seeking planning permission. And the models clearly identify that the response times for West Wirral would be, would be reduced by two minutes. Uh, it would be foolish to say that there wouldn't be an increase in, in response time in the other direction, but by no means is that... Um, uh, two minutes, and as I said, the modelling shows anywhere between 30 seconds and a minute. Thanks, Chair, for, for that clarification. I understand that because West Kirby, most of the operational has, uh, activity has been transferred in the last two years from West Kirby to Upton, uh, even now the uh, national guidance is, I think, 10 minutes, and that the fire appliances travelling from Upton towards West Kirby now are within the national guidance. Is that correct? Do we know? We did. D to be clear, response times is, is a matter for the fire service. Um, um, and, 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 and I don't know whether West Kirby is closed down, but I understand it has largely um, operations have, lar have largely moved to Upton. Um, but but you know, as I said before, the, the, the fire service set their, their response times. Can I ask one more question, Joe? Passing over. Um, on, in terms of the traffic, if you look at page 47 of the report uh, and the comments from the Highways Department, uh, it makes reference to the traffic on Greasby Road um, in terms of as a comparison to the traffic on <laughs> Silver Massey Road. Surely uh, a better comparison would have been Arabrook Road, which is the existing route. Uh, and however, we know the, the results of the recent survey on Silver Massey Road. Do we have the data for the uh, road that's been used as a comparison? Thank you, through you, Chair. Do you mean the data for Arabrook Road or the data for Greensby Road? The data for Greensby Road, which you used as a comparison. Um, well, what, what's in the report is the only data that I've actually got in front of me now, uh, which is uh, 124,000 um, vehicles each week with peak flow over 1,000 vehicles per hour during weekdays. Um, in terms of the data that's been suggested in the report, it's, it's 
the Silver Massey Road is compared with Greasby Road. And yet we don't have the data, the similar data for Greasby Road, because at the moment existing fire appliances are using Arable Road, but we have no data on that. So I'm just trying to get behind the data that's been quoted in the report in terms of vehicle numbers. Because I, particularly having you know having known this area for years, I know when I'm travelling along sort of Massey Road to Mel, Hoylake or West Kirby, narrow country roads, frequently blocked by fallen traffic, at peak hours a continued steady volume of traffic heading towards West Kirby. My concern is that the response times that have been modelled don't reflect the traffic problems that we have on the likes of Heron Road and Mel's, where we know there's a problem, where the council has been trying for years to come up with a solution of existing traffic levels without emergency vehicles trying to get through at this level and also the traffic at West Kirby on Silver Massey Road. So my concern is, is the data, is the highways department satisfied that the data that's been presented to members reflect the traffic on those roads at those times as a comparison to the existing route? Thank you, thank you, Chair. Obviously, I can't, I can't um, comment on how the um, fire brigade have calculated the response times going along those lanes. Um, the figures for Greensby Road were just given in comparison for the figures for Silver Massey Road because um, Council Blakey raised an issue around that he was concerned about the, the, the numbers that were going along Silver Massey Road. So, what we wanted to demonstrate to, to the Council was that um, you know, that's not an unusual number of uh, vehicles to use those roads going east and west across Wirral. It wasn't used in any way to sort of either um, confirm or debunk anything that, that the fire brigade had put forward in terms of their calculation of the 10 minutes or, or whatever response time. Thank you, sir. Just for clarity, it, it, the figures that the highways officer, uh, officer has referred to uh, in terms of the survey, is that the survey that was paid for by residents? Um, uh, yes, well, yes. 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 have been looked into. The first question really for me is one of public safety and saving lives. Now the independent impartial fire chief has recommended that this location as the safest feasible option to maintain the safety of the public across the northwest of Wirral. So we have to take in this expert advice on this. And indeed even your conservative fellow councillor Leslie Rennie is a representative on the fire authority, has spoken up in support of this proposal at the fire authority, and has spoken in horror also at the scale of these cuts to Trina, our authority. Trina, Trina, can, okay, can so, okay, so let's be clear. Sorry, I'm sorry, can I just ask you not to be political in this? So let's be clear, none of, none of us want closures of our fire stations, uh, but our authority are compromised by the ability of the fire authority to do so. So, on balancing the different arguments for and against, I am convinced that the exceptional circumstances for releasing Greenbelt land have been reached, as we are talking about keeping people alive, nothing more and nothing less. And finally, can I just add, that the concerns of the objectors regarding to noise and disruption has not been evidenced in this case. As the Fire Authority have clearly said, they expect fewer than three call-outs a day, and call-out may not even warrant the activation of sirens when traffic is in light, um, so for example in the late evening and the early morning. And we've got to remember these are the safest drivers that we have on our world. These are the fire service. So, yeah. Um, 
I'm just afraid to say that this application is yet another example of government destroying local frontline services. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. There are a couple of issues that I'd like to discuss. I know we started off talking about response times. Um, my understanding is that there is a predetermined attendance set down by the Home Office and that might may be the 10 minute time. And from what's been said in the room at the moment, my understanding is that the response times maximum, either from Upton or uh, West Kirby, are within that period, ranging between five five minutes and seven and a half or eight minutes. So I just wanted to put that bit aside. But getting back to the actual detail of um, the principle of development, the proposed fire station would constitute inappropriate development within the designated green belt under the terms of UDP policy GB2. Also, if we look at UDP policy URN1, it makes it clear that the planning authority will be concerned to ensure that the full and effective use is made of land within the urban areas. And just looking at that point, there are apparently, um, according to the fire station um, chief, that um, of the two stations, Upton provides a more extensive coverage due to the proximity of West Kirby to the coastline. It's for this reason that Upton is designated as a key station and would therefore be the station that remains open should the planning application for the new station at Sorgal Master Road not be approved. By definition then, there is a fallback position, which in my view means that if we then go against UDP policy GB2, which establishes a general presumption against inappropriate development in the Green Belt, and makes it clear that such development will not be approved, except in very special circumstances. UDP policy LAN1 doesn't permit proposals where the visual impact on the character, appearance and landscape setting of the area would be inappropriate. UDP policy LA7 indicates that special regard will be given to the visual impact of proposals at the urban fringe, which I think this is, and will require development to be designed, sited and landscaped to minimise the visual intrusion. Now I know there's going to be a retractable tower. Um, my understanding is that a lot of fire stations have brick towers uh, for the use of fire officers going in the green apparatus and simulating um, cases of rescuing burning bodies. I don't know how and I think it is a piece that the fire station hasn't spoken, but having said that, I don't know um, what the um, fabric will be of the tower and how tall it will be. And I would suggest it's going to be three storeys. Is that about 60 feet or something? And um, if it's that tall, then the visual impact will be quite significant, especially if, um, if it takes several hours or a day to put up, and I don't know how long it does, and how long it takes to, to be taken down. It may very well be that it stays up almost on a permanent basis, depending on how often training sessions are carried out. So having said that, um, UDP policies CH01, CH2 and CH17 only permits development affecting the setting of the Sorgal Massey Conservation Area, where the visual and operational impact of a proposal can be demonstrated to preserve or enhance distinctive characteristics, including important views. So, what I don't understand is that um, if, the, if the existing um, Upton site is satisfactory, as it quite clearly states in the Far Office's letter of the 13th of September, and if Greasby Library was an alternative site which would give good access and enable acceptable response times, but not pursued because of significant local opposition, which in my view is not a special case for using the green belt, and I am concerned that if we were to allow a fire station to be built on the edge of green belt, I think it'd be very difficult if anything comes to the planning committee in the future that is very controversial and impacts on the green belt that it would be very difficult to turn it down. So I think that's very important. <laughs>
appreciate most people in the audience and in terms of, of the objectors and the applicants. They will be aware, um, I'm certain, of the rules by which the committee uh, governs itself. Um, we have the presence, of course, of Grace Television and anybody looking in from outside uh, to watch the debate from anywhere in the world will be interested in, in what we say and how we say it uh, and the things we say. So I, I just wanted to start off by making it clear, and, and again to the chair for confirmation of this, that there is nothing at all untoward uh, for the objectors to not uh, exercise their right not to address the uh, committee. It's, it's entirely usual. Uh, I, I have a right And again, I, I wanted to um, I want to make that point um, that there is nothing wrong whatsoever uh, with objectors doing that. It, is, it, it may or may not be uh, a strategy, um, but um, clearly it does prevent the developer um, also speaking. And we've known that since the Constitution was first drafted and agreed when Council Fabs was leader of the Council. My mind personally would not be clear. To, uh, to that particular uh, uh, rule being altered. You know, I, I quite like the idea of people being able to address us uh, in, uh, in, in all circumstances. Notwithstanding, however, I, I do try to come to committee meeting um, prepared um, and take the opportunity to uh, look at the information that has been presented on the Council's website. All that information tends to be developers and clearly we also receive emails from uh, interested parties and, um, and others. The Fire Authority has put on our website 47 individual pieces of information for us to peruse, including site plans, etc. But also including uh, their submission as to very special circumstances. Now I've heard mention uh, down the table of traffic issues and disturbance of residents. Uh, etc. But for me, um, the main issue that we should um, turn our mind to is whether any of that uh, impacts on the very special circumstances that the developer needs to show. The objectors, in fairness, do not need to show that the very special circumstances have, have not been met. It's up to the developer. The onus lies with them, and they have produced uh, documentation. That, um, that attempts to, uh, to, to, to jump, if you like, that head. And it all revolves around the issue of the fire authorities' uh, perceived requirements on, on response times. The point has been made that clearly if you move in one direction, then response times will go down, but they'll obviously go up in another direction. But probably to an extent, dancing on the head of the pin, when we start to talk about one or two, etc. Because when we look at the national guidance for 10 minutes, none of the information that the fire authority itself has put on our website in support of their application breaches the 10 minutes uh, requirement. So West Kirby and Upton, from either Upton or uh, Southern Mass, can be reached uh, within the national guidance. And that's an important point, I think, because if the whole application turns on the question of response times. Then the only guidance, frankly, that we have that is in stone is the 10 minute one. The rest is, um, it, it, it is, is um, what, what we'd like or what we might like or we'd much prefer. To me, that doesn't reach the head of special circumstances having, having been, uh, been met. And, the point was made by uh, uh, Councillor Blake, and it was one that I picked up myself reading through the documentation, that the balance of the risk lies in the Upton area. So I'm moving to where, even though if, if, if we take the 30 seconds to one minute scenario, the balance of risk is still in the Upton area, uh, as opposed to the uh, West Kent uh, on 72% uh, versus uh, So I have looked at the information. I've tried to I've tried to balance it against the requirement that we have as committee members to decide whether very special circumstances exist. And I'm afraid my conclusion is that they don't exist. That the times fall within the parameters uh, that were allowed. I'm grateful to those members that might be supportive of this that they're not been waving shrouds in my general direction. Uh, or in the general direction of those who are speaking uh, against 
Sure, so before you continue, could I just uh, point out to on page 44 um, of our brief, it actually does state that there are areas of West Kelby that would not be reached within 10 minutes. The, the paperwork that the fire authority has submitted uh, identifies one area of, um, of Hoylake, the Stanley Road, in fact, which can only be reached in 10 minutes and 2 seconds. <laughs> Offset 
by longer response times to areas east of Sogol Nasi. Therefore, on response time grounds alone, there are no very special circumstances to overturn established Greenbelt policy that we go out of our way to support. The site visit serves to confirm the very substantial size of the site actually in the Greenbelt. I had not realised until we went to the site visit how big it actually was including the main buildings, the tower, and the ancillary equipment and buildings associated with it. Also, the proposed development is very close to adjacent shelter accommodation units occupied by elderly and vulnerable residents who do not deserve to have their amenity value compromised by an inappropriate development. I won't go through all the reasons put forward by others, but clearly their amenity value is going to be compromised. Agenda item page 50, penultimate paragraph. The planning officer's comment I think is highly appropriate and valid. It said that this has led to a finely balanced recommendation to approve. In summary, I would strongly suggest that the finely balanced recommendation to approve is flawed, as there have no very special circumstances been demonstrated necessary to overcome our established Green Belt policy. Uh, I'd like to hear what anybody else has to say, but on the basis of having looked at the agenda, having looked at the site, having given it deep and careful consideration for the benefit of the people of Wirral as a whole, I live in Mel, by the way, so I'm, I'm shooting myself in the foot to that extent, but uh, it would be my intention to move refusal. Thank you, Chair.
if there's a benefit, it's very marginal, as Stuart says, we're dancing on thin ends. It may be that there's absolutely no benefit at all when you take into account the fact that Upton has a higher call out rate uh, than West Kirby. So I'm not clear at all to respond to Trina's initial point that we're actually doing anything at all to preserve life. We, we could actually be making things worse, in, in my view. So, really, it comes down to a very simple point then, in my view. If we're going to build on the green belt, we need very special circumstances. It's very clear, if we can't even really convince ourselves that there's any life-saving benefit to this application, then clearly very special circumstances just don't apply. And I'm really actually surprised the fire station want to you know, spend millions of pounds when they've got an existing site in Upton that is doing the job perfectly well. And I really don't understand that. And frankly, you know, when we consider how important the Green Belt is, how important it is to protect it, um, I, I'm, I'm disappointed that officers have actually recommended approval. And the last point I would just say is if we do approve this site, well, frankly, you know, how long before there's an application for more housing on the other side? On the other side.
fine experts on people sitting over there who look after us on a day to day basis, who risk their lives on a day to day basis to protect us and keep us safe. So they are the experts, and I, I cannot accept facts and figures being produced that have gone unchallenged. However, I understand the way the committees work, and it is, it, it is for us to, to make that. But I will return to the actual comments made by the, the fire chief fire officer. Page 44, the um, there to last paragraph. As a result of locating the new fire station in this Greenbelt location, the fire and rescue service will be able to deliver a service that ensures a response time, particularly to the West Kirby station area, are less than 10 minutes. The Merseyside average is five minutes. The proposed fire station will enable the rescue service to make expectable response times in this area currently covered by the West Kirby fire station when it closes. Okay? Now we're aspiring, you all seem to be aspiring here for the residents of Whittle that 10 minutes is okay. I much more prefer to be closer to the other side of 10 minutes because in the previous paragraph, the Chief Fire Officer says survivability after 10 minutes declines critically. So it's a critical issue. So the more you're there before 10 minutes, the logic is you will be able to save lives and indeed put firefighters in a less risky environment. If they get to a fire before it takes hold, the logic is. So this is the fire service, the fire experts saying in all the circumstances that they find themselves in, their optimum, their optimum location is this particular location. We haven't got any other locations to discuss. This is the basis of the application. And I will not wave shrouds, as, as Stuart said, and I will not be political, but we have a decision to make on behalf of all the residents of West Whittle, and this is where this fire station sits, to enhance their chances of survivability. And if the chief fire officer and the men under him and women under him who risk their lives on a daily basis are saying to me, in their expert advice, this is a good option, then if that doesn't prove special circumstances, and I don't really know what the planning laws and planning committee is all about here. So I, I certainly, if there's going to be a move for refusal, and what I've heard tonight, or have not been allowed to hear tonight, I, I certainly will be making a recommendation for approval. <laughs> We did actually hear from, from David to say that if once anybody had finished speaking, that he would look to move refusal. So I'm going to take that first. Okay. So can I just, uh, people still want to speak? Sorry, Chair. It, it was just, um, I just want to come back on the, uh, see if I choose the word optimum location. Uh, that is in the report. Those four words. It doesn't, I'm afraid, refer to the sort of massive size. So it's referred to on page 43 and it refers to land at three lanes end, which the fire authority, which some members are keen to take what the fire authority says the developer as, 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 as gospel. They have identified a completely different site as their optimum. I said, in all the circumstances that they have found themselves in, and that is the search for other sites, this is the option. So this is what the fire service are proposing to the planning committee. If you want to make up stories and accuse me of oh, put words into mouth, I don't think that means that. Side 
vampire series. We're talking about them as though they're some sort of evil force. These are people who will be good neighbours. A community fire station is an asset to any community. But we'll it talk to people who live by the community fire stations and what they put into the community. These are people who risk their lives on a daily basis to help us out. And to talk about them as being inefficient, being stupid, or fabricating, or deceiving, to be quite fair, and so is that I am saying to you, I, and I won't be misquoted, I have said, in all the circumstances that the fire savers find themselves in, through decisions who other, whoever's made, this is where they're putting their effort, resources, time and effort, to protect the people of Whittle. And if we ignore that, we ignore that of our pen.